on a serious note, Hogan and Hartson was one of the first significant law firms to have a pro bono department. And I know that you were you were very much involved in that. In that. It was, was that something that you that drew yourself to some of the pro bono work that was done by them? Well, um, to be honest, it was uh, mostly for the experience. Um, uh, Barrett had uh, done a, a large amount of pro bono work. It was an opportunity to work with him again on, on some things. Uh, but it did give me uh, exposure to a part of the practice that I really didn't, wasn't familiar with and uh, did uh, help me learn a little bit about how important it was to make sure that, uh, I mean, there are a lot of, one of the great, we, we have visitors from around the world who come to the, the court uh, uh, because it is such uh, a focal point for people who believe in the rule of law. And uh, uh, one of the things that they say how great our system is, and they're right, but one of the great flaws are it, it really doesn't offer much for people of modest means. I mean, the, it, it, it doesn't serve them at all. So the idea of uh, uh, providing pro bono services, I think, is become absolutely critical. And it was, again, something that Barrett exposed me to uh, by having these cases there and allowing me the opportunity to work, work on them. You were kind of in the forefront of that, Barrett, weren't you? I mean, as far as just having the, your firm sort of really recognize that that's really part of the responsibility of the firm. Yeah, we felt very deeply that, uh, and, and particularly it was at a time when people being sentenced to death did not have either any representation or adequate representation. And I was getting calls from people who were worried about that and asking if we wouldn't take uh, at least one case and run with it. And um, so we felt, I, I talked to partners and we, we felt definitely we wanted to do that. There's one fellow now who's alive 34 years later <laughs> um, that we took on at that time. 